Usually, worksheets have a straightforward table with a single record occupying a row and a field value occupying a single cell in a single column, such as we see here. The patient, address, service code, symptoms 1 and 2, and the bill occupy one column each. In this worksheet, however, a record occupies multiple rows. The patient and address fields are in the same column, with the address occupying two cells. Each patient record has up to two symptoms for this log, and these occupy a cell each. However, some patients only have one symptom recorded. Monarch's Excel worksheet design is easily capable of capturing data from irregular worksheets such as this. Since our worksheet has several fields enclosed in multiple lines, we want to drag the stencil so that we capture the entire area. Now when we add a trap on the patient field, note that all the patients have been correctly detected even if there are address fields in between. With that, we can add a column for the patient. The address, though, occupies two cells. Click on Add Column, which captures the first part of the address. And this time, let's edit the column and click on Enable Multi-Cell. The column now contains the complete address from the two cells. Let's take a closer look at the properties that appeared. The stop type signifies the end of the multi-cell value. The default is a blank, which works for us because Monarch has detected that the next line is a new record, and hence the stop of the current multi-cell value. If this is set to line count with the count set to 1, we only get the first value. Updating the line count to 2 gets the entire address. The other options are background, font, and border change, which work in pretty much the same manner. Let's leave this at the line count option as we know that the address occupies two lines in the worksheet. Next, we have the delimiter, which is currently set to a space. This can be set to a comma or a semicolon, a new line or tab, as well as a custom character or string. A space works best for the address. Let's set it back to that. With that, let's rename these two columns as patient and address. The next column, the service code, is pretty straightforward. Just click on Add Column. Next, let's get the symptoms. Each patient can have up to two different symptoms. Select the first symptom, drag down to include the second symptom, and this time instead of Add Column, the Add Columns button is available for us. Let's call these Symptom 1 and Symptom 2. To finish this off, let's get the bill and rename it. With our fields in place, let's bring this to the prep interface. Here we can clean, prepare, blend, and transform our data, and even export to other platforms for reporting and visualization.